Hi guys, welcome to Charlie and me, our camping vlog, the van build, with thanks to our friends at garysglue.ie. I'm just getting ready, got the car full of tools and camera equipment, getting ready to head out to the shed, just to take a quick look at the electrics. This isn't an electrics video. I need to remove the front seat and the passenger seat because there's panels behind them. And I don't know what's in the one behind the passenger seat and the one behind the driver's seat comes out so far that it's going to be in the way when we cut the door from the cab into the salon, the living quarters. There's a big case, they're fabulously finished cases. The HSE and whoever built these ambulances, they're fantastic. The one behind the passenger seat is upright. It's probably 18 inches by maybe four foot, but the one behind the driver's seat is on its side, possibly three foot by 18 inches. And I need to shorten that by about a foot. Also under the passenger seat, I think there's electrics because I saw a wiring diagram and I'd love to take a look at that. So I'm going to head from here, from HQ, out towards the shed. And uh, let's take a, a look at getting these seats out and see what's behind them and under them. So electrics, there's quite a lot of electrics in this ambulance, quite a lot. You've got all of the b-ball lights, the ambulance lights, sirens, flashing units for them. You've got outside scene lights, which I'm calling the awning lights. Then inside you've got 12 volt, 240 volt. And there's two batteries on the passenger side outside, one battery which I think runs the hoist on the driver's side outside. And I think there's more batteries under this seat. But what is behind this seat, the passenger seat, is a control panel. And behind the driver's seat, there is also a control panel. Now, that means that I've got to take out the two seats. Uh, I've got the engines running just to keep the batteries charged for a while because I'm using lights. And let's take the seats out and see where that gets us. Now, the seats are held in with these hex bolts. Um, there's also one on the seatbelt here. So I've got to release the seatbelt. And I've also got to make sure that we don't lose any of the bolts or any of the washers. So I'm going to put it back into the seat. That's that one. And then we need this size hex bolt to get into the base of the seat in there and to the front out here. And as I have said time and time again on these videos, these little 10 minute jobs would probably take a half hour. Let's touch a little bit of wood. And so far, oh, I'm after seeing another bolt. I'll come back to you when I have all these done, okay? Okay, so the uh, 10 minute job did turn out to be a 10 minute job. And this is what's behind the door. There's also a schematic of some description. I'm gonna see if I can get this to focus. Oh, which I'm gonna take a look at. There's also controls under there. And now this one here has to come out. So to get to that, we gotta take out the driver's seat. So let me show you what's actually in here. Not a lot, thankfully. It seemed to have been all the controls for the camera. As you know, there's a reverse camera, front camera, and interior camera, and they seem to be all coaxes for the camera system. Um, oh, right, there is. I just see down here in the bottom where that yellow plug is down there. There's an ST card receiver there, so maybe there is still some recording gear in there. But all that has to be looked at and maybe can be removed. But this one in here is the one that's going to cause me problems because we want to cut a door underneath that window, possibly from the edge of that window, a little bit just short of the full width of the window to give us access there. So there's a fuse board, a couple of speakers, and let's see what the story is with that big board over there.
I just pulled back that seat cover and there is a universal charger there. The whole diagram is actually there. All the fuses are marked one, two, three, and four, and they're marked here on the drawing. So that's going to be a handy thing to have. I'm glad we have that. Right, let's get over here and take that seat out. Okay, so same setup this time. Passenger seat, I'm not going to record it and show you how it's done. Or sorry, the driver's seat's coming out this time. We'll place it here and we'll take a look at the electrical systems board behind that seat. Okay, so I've got the driver's seat out, the passenger seat out. So I told you there's a single battery on the driver's side outside. Let's call them leisure batteries. There's a two, two of them over on the passenger side. There's the electronics I showed you under the passenger seat. And take a look what's under the driver's seat. It seems to be the driving batteries. I'd say they are just literally running the Ford. They have the Ford logo on them. So uh, I did notice that every time I turn off the engine, it also turns off the uh, live feed to the stereo. So I have to, every time I turn on the engine, I have to put the code into the stereo, but that's a fixable thing. Now, this is the thing. Actually, what I want to do first is put all the bolts back into the seat so I don't lose them. And then I'll show you what's in the press behind the driver's seat. The yard where I actually am, I share with a couple of guys and uh, they built some go-karts yesterday. Now they're little Honda motorbike engines and uh, the guys bought the bodies for scrap and got them going yesterday. Thankfully this is a secure yard so there's no, there's no worries but uh, there's a great little bit of pep out of them I'll tell you. Right, let's take a look at what is actually in this container here, because this has to be moved. I'm gonna try and stand it upright. Well, it depends on what's, oh my gosh. Okay. That's the whole uh, ATEC unit that runs absolutely everything. Oh, I'd love to get a wiring diagram for that. A lot of these aren't going to be needed, but some of them are just running to the 12 volt. Somewhere there for the cardiac unit, somewhere there for the cameras. We're gonna to have to do a little bit of investigation, but at least I now know that I can cut it short. I don't know where to put this torch. At least I now know that I can cut it. I need to cut that back. Probably, when do we get this out of the way here? I need to cut that back probably to about here. So at least now I know that that's just cabling and we can, we can cut it back. That's absolute brilliant news. I don't know if you can see there's a plug top here. I think that plugs into the inverter that would have been there and runs the 230, 220 volts in the back. We'll uh, sort that out a wee bit later on and see. At least I hope it does, because I'd like to fit my inverter in here or just inside. Right, I've disconnected that uh, Ace Tech unit from the mains. That way it's not drawing. It just means I have no lights or anything inside. I see there's a... Uh, I've just pulled these leads up here to see what it's doing and there seems to be some kind of modem, we'll do some investigations. I'm going to ring the company in Clara that make ambulances and see is there a, a wiring diagram available, even if I have to buy it for this. But the good news is, I really need to cut this door back, cut this, this press back to about there. So whether I cut it back or take it out and make a new one, I'd say I'll probably take it out altogether and see if a friend of mine who's good at the metalwork can shorten it and make a new one back to about there. So I'm going to take some measurements. Um, I'll see if I can get that out today. I just want to make sure that I don't, I really don't want to mess with any of this. Right, let's do some investigating. Okay, so I got the surround off that. I'm going to bring it home, do a bit of work in the shed, try and cut it down to size. 
I'm just going to remove that fuse board and pull it over there because the door is obviously going to be there. So I'm just going to pull it back. Uh, I'm going to leave it connected for the moment. There's a lot of stuff here. I'm going to leave connected for the moment. I'm nearly sure all of that over there hang on, is video. A lot of that, I think, will be just disconnected. I'm not going to take it out just for the sake of a few pounds. I don't know. But that unit there definitely has to be moved over. And as I said earlier on, I think that is for the inverter. But I think I could fit the inverter up here. Right, let's get a little move on and then I'm going home.